Hello, my friends, family, community. Thank you for joining me here as I talk about how fear and stress play a huge role on our body and how our energy within us affects our physique, affects our relationships, and even can um, affect our perception as well of what is happening in our reality. So I did record this already a couple times and I had to really get clear with the message because I obviously, of course, I'm not a health expert. I would just want to make that clear. This is all based on my own personal work, working with other people and my observations. So of course, this is always open discussion. If you have any comments or questions too, please leave them below as I love hearing from everyone and I love talking about these subjects. Fear creates many things. Fear is at the basis of a lot of things that basically prevent us from being in a high vibrational flow. It prevents us from maybe connecting with our intuition. It prevents our body from thriving in a very healthy way. It prevents many things, actually. Uh, it prevents us from living our full potential. It prevents us from living in our authentic self. It prevents quality relationships. It prevents so much. Especially it can exasperate stress. It can bring on stress a lot. We tend to react a lot to the outer world because of fear and we carry on a lot of that energy. We carry a lot of, a lot of worry. We carry a lot of lack confidence. We carry a lot of stress. We carry a lot of pressure. We carry a lot of need to prove ourselves. We carry a lot of need to, to try and make ourselves try to be very successful. So we carry on a lot of these, these things, but at the very root of it tends to be fear. But I'm going to talk about stress right now because I feel stress is something that we all can relate to because we live in a society that's all about performance. It's all about performance, making money, showing up, doing a great job, being accepted in society, proving ourselves, going for the rewards and all those things. So when we have all these influences on our lives, we tend to carry a lot of stress. We tend to carry this weight of who am I? How am I showing up in the world? I need to create great success. I have deadlines. I have children. I have family. I have needs. People want so much of me and then we, we split ourselves into so many different areas of our life. We lose our, our sense of self. We lose our center perhaps. Um, our health takes a hit. And also too, because stress is very hard on the body, it can speed up our aging process. It is really, really, really tough on our system. From a health aspect, if you think of everything as energy, stress requires a lot of energy to maintain, a lot of energy to, um, to feed into, essentially. It's depleting. It depletes our central nervous system. It depletes our body. It depletes the energy reserves that we have within us that we need to function in a very healthy and strong way. So it takes away the ability to rejuvenate and rest. So oftentimes when we're in stress, we have a hard time turning off. We have a hard time resting. Resting and recovery is so important. So just a quick little story. I actually used to be a competitive cyclist. I worked with an Olympic coach. Uh, I was, I had big goals, I had great ambitions, and I truthfully had a lot of the, the right ingredients to do really well in cycling. So I went as far as I could. And when I was working with a coach, I thought it was all about pushing hard. I thought it was all about training hard. I thought it was all about performance. I wanted to win. I was so competitive. And uh, when I went through the program working with a coach, there was a lot of going out there and pedaling very softly. And when I would go out and on the trails or on the bike path or not, it was road cycling, so it was on the paved path, there would be people passing me. And there was a part of me like, well, they can't pass me. I'm going to go catch them. And so I would start to speed up or my heart would start to speed up. But I had my body for the uh, program that I was in for rest and recovery. I needed to honor that and to stay in a slow pace. Now, that was the most challenging exercise. And that was actually truthfully my first uh, my first insight into why it's so important to rest, why it's so important to recover and really looking into our own energy and our own perception and coming from this mentality of performance, 
having to succeed, wanting to be ultra competitive, push, 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 type A personality, that's the win, that's if you're falling in that, if you're falling in that bracket, then you're accomplished. You're going to make something of yourself. That is not true at all because when we put so much emphasis on that, there are other areas in our life that are going to fail. And it very well could also come down to our health and our well-being. So again, when we put so much emphasis on performance, stress, anxiety, when we carry all this energy within us, it depletes energy because it takes so much energy. It's like a energy vampire trait that we put on ourselves essentially. So we need to fuel that. We need to fuel the stress. So we're continually in this loop of trying to uh, go into going into our reserves essentially to fuel that stress, to fuel that energy that that needs to operate because our mind is always on, we have so many duties, we have so many responsibilities, so that also leads to burnout. It also leads to, again, other areas of our life that, um, that need to be addressed that won't get our attention or that we won't be able to connect with. So how do we avoid going into these traps of stress and anxiety? How do we fuel our body with the good stuff? How do we find balance? How do we even know and address that we are in this perpetual cycle? Sometimes we don't even notice it. It's almost as if, it's almost like a programming. It's almost a habit that we fall into uh, because some of us may have this, this idea that performance and pushing hard equals success, equals status, equals acceptance, equals the way that just this culture wants us to be. That's not the case. That's an artificial story, it's been made up, it's I don't know where it's come from, but it's been part of our society for a long, long time. And it has created a ripple effect of a lot of problems, especially health. A lot of health problems come from that, come from the stress that we put on our body. It weakens our immune system, we get sick, we get run down, we get chronic diseases, chronic pains. And sometimes we don't even know that we're in it until it's too far, until we've gone really deep into that hole, into our reserves. So how do we, again, how do we prevent this? How do we reverse the, the, uh, the pattern maybe or reverse the direction that we're going in? Well, it's first identifying it. It's slowing down and going, okay, is this really healthy? How am I managing my day-to-day? -day? What are my habits? Do I really need to put so much emphasis on so many things in my life? Where can I trim back? What can I do to take off and eliminate some stress that I'm placing on myself. And a lot of the times too, I mean, we can, truthfully, we can manage a lot. We really can. But it's also in the way that we manage things. It's also in the way that we, we, we take on the responsibilities. If we take on a lot of responsibilities and in our mind, we're like, oh, I got to do that. I have to do that. And we're constantly thinking about it. Then that depletes energy, then that creates more stress and that needs more energy from ourselves and that also creates burnout and all these other things. So it is very much of awareness. Being cautious of the mind. So being cautious of, is the mind always on? Are you always thinking? Is, is, are there always things that you need to do? Are there always the lists, the pressures? Let go of it. Let go of it, write it down on paper, put it in your phone. I now put everything in my phone and then I forget it because I know it's there and I don't have to think about it anymore. And then my mind is free for, for this, to do more work, to show up fully, to be more focused, to have more energy for the good things, to allow for creative ideas. And when our mind isn't on all the time, then we have more energy for other things. Our body is calmer, we're a little bit more at peace, we're not draining ourselves and we have the creative insight. Our relationships get better because we're there for people, we can listen, we understand, we're showing up fully, um, we're not burning out as much. I mean, yes, we still can push ourselves and we need rest. Another thing is going to be to honor rest. So not to be hesitant to maybe take a nap, to maybe sleep seven or eight hours instead of five or six. Um, we do need that time for rejuvenation. Our body needs to repair, our cellular structures need to repair, need to rebuild, um, feed yourself with the good stuff, healthy foods, organics, lots of water, you know, lo lo low sugar, no sugar, um, especially central nervous system, coffee will trigger that, Tr coffee will trigger stress, sugar will trigger stress. 
Sugar is very addictive as well. It's very important to curb addictions, period. If you need something to get you through the day, then definitely be aware of that. Check in, try and work without it for a while. And I know it's difficult because again, that's a habit that has been formed for maybe some time. So sometimes we need sugar, sometimes we need coffee. And if it's a need, then it's like your body has become dependent on that to get through the day in some kind of way. So it's very important to address some of those things as well so that you can slowly move off of it and gain, regain your natural rhythm, regain your natural energy, energy source, and you will have more energy because of that. And I know it seems almost counterproductive because, and I drank coffee for years, I would drink double Americanos straight up, I would drink black coffee, I would drink double black espresso, I would drink coffee all day. I loved my coffee rituals. I don't drink coffee anymore and I don't miss it and I have more energy and I feel clean and my, my mind, my mental processing is very on point. And that's another thing too for meditation meditation integration is hugely important it's so valuable it slows our mind down it creates calmness within ourselves it slows our central nervous system down it slows our heart rate down and when we are in the state of calm and when we are connected with ourselves and tuned in with other people and tuned in with greater awareness then we make less mistakes we are paying attention, we see things, we hear things, we feel things. It's almost like we become almost, we've increased a superpower of ours. When we're moving so fast, when we have a lot of things going on, we tend to make mistakes. Sometimes what I found is that if I would make mistakes, I would get self-conscious about those mistakes and then I would be afraid of putting myself out there and doing things. It would be like a perpetual state that I would find myself in. I'd be moving a lot very fast. Oftentimes I found too that my I was processing information so fast that I was having a hard time communicating effectively. So that's what happens when we slow things down. There are so many advantages. And then we also learn a lot about ourselves. Where is this coming from? Where is that fear residing? Where is that stress coming from? Do I really need to carry that stress? I can still perform, I can still get a lot done, but why the stress? Why am I putting, placing that on myself? So we really have the ability within ourselves to let it go. It may require constant work. It may require constant check-in, but it will be worth it. And it is something that will need some time, but over time you will notice a huge change. And yes, our physiology will change and adapt because of that. Our skin, our expressions, how we carry ourselves in the outer world, our posture, our demeanor, this all will reflect our energy within us. So you can all also observe when people are under a lot of stress, when they're in fear, when they're more in their masculine, when they're more in their feminine. These things tend to come out when we are in fear, when we are in love, when we are under a lot of stress. It also does affect the relationships that we encounter how we maneuver through these relationships, how we interact with relationships and the relationships that we also attract. So remember, whatever happens in our inside world here is reflecting in our outer world all the time, all the time. And also when our stress is exasperated, when we are living in a high stress or high fear mode, oftentimes we can come into a lot of conflict with people. But when we're living in a low stress, high frequency mode, then our relationships become stronger. Our relationships come become more meaningful. And we also become adaptable with certain problems, certain issues, certain challenges that may show up, and we deal with them in a very healthy way. So there are a lot of advantages for this. This is a huge game changer. I really suggest and challenge to go into the stress or into the fear and see if it is existing, if it is resonating with you, of course. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave them below. I love hearing from everyone. I do hope that sheds some light and uh, I'm wishing you all the best. I will be seeing you soon. Take care.